Welcome to Space Engineers. My name is Centred75, or Kip Wilson. Today we're going to talk about the New Player's Guide to the Fountain Core Server, a multiplayer server on Space Engineers. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, first things first, go check out their website, info.collimatedlight.com. There you'll find a lot of good information, forums, and news, in addition to rules and regulations. I highly suggest you read the rules page, at least. Uh, it's got a lot of rules on the site for the specific things that uh, are pertinent to the Fountain Core server. As you can see, we started out uh, in a brand new respawn ship, and uh, now I'm just taking a look at uh, to see what we have in our inventory. So we're looking at uh, the inventory supplies in our cargo containers. It looks like we have uh, a little bit of supplies there to go start our new base and our new adventure on the Fountain Core server. All right, so what we're doing here is it looks like we respawned right at the edge of the map. Uh, the map size here is 100 kilometers from the center, so it looks like they respawned us right on the edge, so we're going to have to uh, move to the center. The specific uh, map layout on the Fountain Core server is that uh, is that uh, most of the most of the asteroids are actually in located in the center? There's a few sparsely populated, uh, procedurally generated asteroids throughout the the, the map, but uh, the the biggest uh, collection of asteroids are actually in the center, under the around the uh, beacon labeled Roid Central. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually moving all the materials from uh, one supply box to the other. So the front supply box is now empty. Now we're just verifying that. There we go. There's no uh, supplies in the supply box that we're looking at. So we're going to go ahead and grind it down. And then we're going to replace it in a different uh, position. So what, we're, what I'm trying to do here is I want to get those uh, small... Uh, access ports instead of being on the top and bottom to the sides. So I'm just kind of reorganizing that. So it's changing color so it looks the same. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna place it. Now it's at the top. And move it over. Okay, now as you can see, the small access ports have been placed to the side. So now I'm gonna load it up. And uh, we have the small access ports on the side now instead of the top. And that's gonna allow me to run a conveyor. Uh, system from the drill that's going to be mounted in the front to the access ports to the side of the cargo container. So now I'm pulling uh, conveyor tubes and a small drill. Now this uh, server uses uh, a drill mod that allows us to um, play place different size drills and only one drill can be used per ship but these drills are function a lot better than the standard uh, non-modded drills in the game so so even the small drill actually functions really nicely in this game so as you can see they'll be, uh, they'll be pretty good here uh, later in the video so now I'm just selecting uh, the the size drill I want I'm actually gonna probably select a medium drill here but uh, I had to cut out to uh, that point and replace it so we there don't have enough materials for a medium drill, so we actually ended up, actually ended up putting in a small drill. So, so now I'm collecting the materials to go ahead and place the drill on the front of the craft. There we go. And I'm going it up. It takes, actually it takes a while, uh, the drills do require uh, a fair amount of resources and they are fairly slow to both grind and weld, so it will take a little while. It, even on this server, which actually has pretty fast weld and grinding speeds, these drills do take, take a while. Now I'm just putting some of the materials back that I don't need. going to be pulling materials for the conveyor system. Uh, 
unlike the ship welder and the ship grinder, uh, the, the, the drill itself actually only has a couple small conveyor ports on both back and the two sides. Uh, this allows it, or requires it to use the small conveyor tubes to uh, run uh, or from the drill to storage containers or other parts of the ship. So, as you can see now I'm running the uh, running the conveyor tubes up the side of the ship, around, and then to the side of the container. Now, the reason why we moved the container is that so I didn't have to actually run the conveyor system on the outside of the ship. And that actually is very intentional because with the small drill on this ship, the drill creates a, a tunnel or a hole just big enough for the ship to get through. So if I had to route this conveyor system out and around the outside of the ship, it could uh, it could be too big for us getting into a tunnel or a hole that we made with the drill itself, so it could lead to damage or even destroy the ship if we to do that. So doing it this way allows me to route the conveyor system without any worry about uh, our ship being too big to, to fit into the hole that we, uh, that we will create by using this drill. So now I'm just holding it up. It shouldn't take, as you can see, it's really fast. This is actually uh, uh, normal speed, so I'm not uh, speeding up this video at all. This is actually how fast it uh, it welds. So uh, you know, one good thing about the server is that uh, the capacities and the weld speeds and all that are actually pretty high. So you're not wasting a lot of time just like you know m moving around materials or taking a lot of times welding or grinding or drilling stuff. So now what I'm doing here is I'm actually dry grounding off this spotlight. I'm not really sure why this design has a spotlight that's actually pointed straight up. There doesn't seem to be any really need for this. So I'm grinding it down and I'm going to reposition it towards the front so I actually have a little bit of light when I'm doing my mining. It's very helpful. You know, it's really hard to mine in the dark, especially if you're trying to find uh, mineral pockets, you know, especially ones that are silver, like uh, silver or platinum, you know, and that look almost like exactly like rock so so having a good spotlight on the front of your ship is is really handy and one thing i like to do with the spotlights or any kind of lights is uh, up the uh, radius to 10 meters the more the larger the radius the the bigger the spot is and, and the easier it is to see so there we go now we're ready to go drilling so next thing you do is on these uh, respawn ships the ore detector there is an ore detector on these ships and it's always set up to default off so we have to actually manually turn it on now we're just going to go straight to the uh, to the asteroid here just going to speed up the video a little bit and do some mining and here we go now I'm just checking to make sure that the ore detector is on. Uh, sometimes I like to double check. There's there's things in Space Engineers where, you know, it's easy to forget, so, you know, better to be safe than sorry and not spend a whole bunch of time doing something you think, you know, or you were doing right only to find out, you know, something wasn't on, like your ore detector, and, you know, and don't want to spend 20 minutes, you know, flying around an asteroid and wondering why there's no ore in there when, in fact, you know, you're, it was simply that your ore detector was off. So as you can see, we we're spotting a little iron. We've got some silver there. Now I'm just going to decide to kind of just pick a spot. Uh, there's iron all around, so I'm just going to get some. What you want to do as a uh, new player is you want to get about 20,000 kilograms worth of each ore, uh, and maybe a little bit more with the iron because it's so easy to get, and you, you do end up using a lot of it. So, so. I'm going to get about 50,000 kilograms of iron and about 20,000 kilograms of most of the rest of the ores um, in this trip. And you want to make sure you get at least a little bit of everything because you're going to be needing everything to construct your base and all the components that it requires. So here I am doing a little bit of tunnel mining. As you can see that the drill area is actually, you know, just larger than this respawn ship. So very handy. Uh, it allows me to actually do some tunnel mining just without with just a few minor modifications to the ship without any kind of you know massive redesign. It's very nice. And as you can see what I'm doing a lot of the problems that new players have is that they damage or destroy their drills a lot. And the reason I think is because they 
just keep pushing forward. Personally, I have very little problem with mining, and that's because I use this method of kind of like push and stop. You know, I go forward a little bit, let the drill clear out some uh, area, and then uh, go forward a little bit more, let it clear out some area, go forward some more, let it clear out some area. And that method seems to work really well about making sure that, you, you know, you're not damaging or destroying your drills. Cargo capacity is another way that uh, drills typically explode. Once you exceed the cargo capacity of a drill and its associated and connected containers, the drill will explode if you mine anymore. So you want to make sure that uh, you are not exceeding the cargo capacity of your ship and trying to mine more, or you will lose your drill. So here I'm grabbing a little bit of a, a little bit of uranium. Now I'm going to get more than I planned just because I see the silicone deposit uh, up ahead. So I'm just going to go ahead and drill straight through. So here we go. I'm grabbing some silicon. As you can see, a lot of these uh, ores look very similar to each other. You know, silicon and platinum in rock look very similar to each other. Um, iron and nickel look very similar to each other. You know, about the only two that really stand out is uh, gold and uranium. Those are about the only two that really, you know, are easy to spot. Okay, and here I am going for uh, a little bit of magnesium and a little bit of platinum, it looks like. So I'm getting a little bit of that. And then uh, I almost forgot to get cobalt. I think that cobalt is always the one that I was uh, forget. Now, this is interesting because this cobalt vein is very narrow. It's not a, a deep vein, so I'm not really having to do a, a tunnel. I'm actually just doing more of a, like a surface strip mining. Well, that's one very uh, good advantage with a small strip ship drill versus a large ship drill is that the large ship drill really is meant for like tunnel mining, while, while the, the small strip drill is really good for doing both, you know, uh, tunnel mining and strip mining. Now we just need to pick up some nickel and then we should be good and we should be ready to build our base. Nickel is important like cobalt because it's in, used in the manufacture of motors and motors are definitely important. So it looks like here I got pretty much everything that I need in terms of resources. And we're good on cargo space so now we're ready to go build us a base. Now one of the main things that uh, new players do is that they'll just put a base right on this asteroid or, or any, somewhere close by center and that's kind of the the one thing that you don't want to do. See everybody comes to center. Everybody comes to center to mine for asteroids, to look for other players, to do just about everything they need to do which means that it won't be, take long. It'll be a matter of hours before someone cr comes across your base if you, you put it in center. So what you want to do to have any length of survival time is you want to get as far as away from center as possible. So generally at least 50,000 kilometers, or excuse me, 50,000 meters, 50 kilometers, is kind of a good minimum distance. Some put them a little closer, 30 kilometers. Anything less than 30 kilometers is really just not safe. It's, it's too easy to find a base that close to center and it will get raided and you will have to start all over again. Take your time and go. Here, what I did is I accidentally jumped out of my ship. But it's a good because when I'm in a new, uh, new spawn ship, before I get a base set up, I never turn off my inertial dampeners. And this happens to me, uh, not a lot, but fairly often. You know, even as an experienced player, sometimes I accidentally hit T and jump out of my ship and it's a pain. But your spawn ship has everything that you need, all that you need. So it's critical that you don't lose it. Before you get a base set up, just keep your inertial dampeners on. That way, if you accidentally jump out or something happens, at least you can grab your ship. If you if you had your inertial dampers off, that ship would just fly away and then you'd have to start all over again. All this time was wasted for building, modifying the ship and mining all that stuff. So keep your initial dampers on at least until you get a base set up. That way you don't lose everything just on a, uh, an accidental press the key. So here we go. We're going a little bit farther out. Uh, uh, away from center. I want to get out uh, at least 50 kilometers, 50,000 meters, so we're moving pretty quickly and here we are. We're about 55 kilometers and this is where I think is a good base setup. I decide to stop. 
And the next thing you want to do is once you get a base location that you're happy with or you want to be at, look around. See if there's anything nearby, if there's any asteroids, if, if you see any structures, any people. You want to make sure you're away from everybody. There's nothing visually in sight. If you see somebody, you're gonna, they can see you, and they're going to come and raid your base. So you want to make sure that nobody's nearby. You don't have any neighbors that are coming to come and find you and raid you and make you have to start all over again. So make sure that you look around and that you set up your base location where it's not close by to anybody else. The farther you're away you are from somebody, the longer your base will last. Now, on a PvP server, your base is going to get raided sooner or later. That's just a, an inevitability. The farther you go out, the farther you are from people, the longer your base will last. And the longer... The more time you have to set your base up, the more defenses you can get up there, the more armor you can put them on it, and then it'll be harder for other people to take. Now, right here, I like to change the colors of my base colors from light or white to a dark color. And this, in this uh, instance, I selected a dark blue. The darker or more in line you are color-wise with the background, the harder it is for enemies to find your base. So you, you want to make sure that you're going to be camouflaged, and color actually works really well for helping camouflage your base. Now here we are uh, setting up uh, the first instances of the base with the basic equipment. Got your refinery going in. cargo container in there. I don't have any uh, internal plates, interior plates, so I'm going to go grab some. All right. So right now I'm just actually setting up the skeleton and I'll actually weld everything once I get the, you know, the placement of everything that I'm happy with. So I like to place everything first, see how it works out, see it, make sure it's, it's something that it works for me, and then I weld everything out. Other people like to just weld things as they go. I think uh, just making sure that the placement is done, that way it's it functions for you before you know, weld up. Because if you mess something up, then you're going to have to unweld that or grind all that down, and that's going to be a pain. Now we got just about everything that we need for our starter base. Put in a med bay. I also like to put in a flight seat or control station. That way it allows you to recharge. It's easier on a multiplayer server to recharge at a seat rather than the med bay because the lag sometimes causes it, the med bay to take a while to recharge. And if you're really low on, on health or, or power, that could be a bad thing. Okay, I'm gonna weld up the small reactor first. Power is the, always the first thing that you're gonna need. I get a few more supplies here. we go. We got a functional reactor. So the first thing that I do when I get my first control panel in there is I go in and I turn off the beacon and reduce the broadcast radius. If you power this uh, platform and weld up the beacon and forget to do this, that beacon is going to be spreading out your information, your location to everybody within a 10,000 meter radius. And that's the last thing you want to do. So the first thing I always do, no matter what, is as soon as I get a control panel in there, turn off that beacon. That way you don't forget and you're not displaying your location to everybody in the universe. Alright, pulled some uh, uranium from the ship's uh, reactors, got it powered up. Now we have a the very first steps of our functioning station. Now I'm going to finish uh, 
put together the cargo container. We want to have a place to store all of our ore that we just mined. And then I'm going to get to the med bay welded up. Without the med bay, I won't be able to respawn at this base, and I will actually have to start out as a new with a new ship again. So that uh, that wouldn't be very fun. I would lose all this good stuff here. So I want to make sure that if I die for some unfortunate reason, I can come back and respawn here instead of having to start all over again. Okay, that pretty much uses up all the materials I brought with my respawn ship. And it looks like I'm still out some small tubes here for the completion of this assembler. This leaves a problem. So I go grind down uh, the mid bay a bit so I can grab the tubes here. And it's, uh, right now, the assemblers are more important than the mid bay. Got it functioning. And then I put in some steel plates so I can disassemble them back into iron ingots. We've got plenty of steel plates, but uh, we can turn those iron ingots into many other things, like small steel tubes, large steel tubes, interior plates, construction components, and so on. So I devote a portion of those to, to getting some iron back. The amount of materials in the response ship was very specific to start this new player base, yet I used a lot of them to build our drill that's on the front of our ship. So I really devoted a lot of the materials that were meant for this base to that uh, to that drill, and that's why I'm actually short on a lot of materials for building the base. So here I am going to be grinding off the drill so I can reclaim those materials. Now this is okay because all new respawn ships go away. You don't want to really keep this respawn ship. It will disappear after a certain amount of time. You're going to end up having to grind it down for the materials anyway, so this is really not a big deal. There we go. Got it ground down. What materials I need. Should give me enough materials to put together the uh, med bay. Now if I die, I can respawn at my med bay and I'll be great. Okay, I'm going to take off some of these uh, small conveyor tubes because I need the motors. Now, if you only can find a certain number uh, or certain types of minerals, the, the high priority ones you want to find definitely are nickel and cobalt. Because what I found on most servers is that the first thing you tend to run out of are motors. And motors require nickel, cobalt, and iron to be built. So those are those are the three mi materials or minerals that you really, really want to make sure that you have as a new player. Here I am. I'm just going to move maneuver my uh, ship a little closer so I can manually transfer the ore that I mined from the ship's cargo hold to the station cargo hold. Now I could have probably just welded up some connectors and docked the station and. That would have been fine too, but I figured I didn't really have a, a, a lot of a lot of ore, so it was just as easy for me to transfer manually. And then when I get a little bit more refined ingots, where I can build a connector, then I can do that at a later date, or when I get more ore after I mine it. And there we go, we have the start of the base. Now, we have one missing and very important item, this beacon right here. Most servers, especially the Fountain Core server, requires a beacon for your base to stay around. That's how the Fountain Core scripts check to decide what stays and what goes during cleanup. But you need a beacon and it needs to be complete. It needs to be fully built. The only problem is, is the respawn ship doesn't have any antenna components. And this is the reason why it's always better to mine first rather than set up a base because you don't have enough components to fully build a beacon. So if you're, if the server resets before you get that beacon built, you lose your base entirely. Mining first so you can get the materials to construct the antenna components that you need to build the beacon is of a higher priority than building the base itself. So that's why I suggest mining first and then building the base.
And here I am going to be taking off some of the cargo containers. Like I said, we don't really need the ship anymore. It's going to go away anyway, so we might as well grind it down. And then I harvested some of the components from the ship so I could finish the beacon. Still short on a couple tubes. Using the iron that we got from the steel plates that we disassembled, we're going to build some steel tubes. charge at our medical room. Don't really need a recharge, but never hurts to be topped off, and I'm just waiting for these tubes to be built anyway. Okay, got our tubes. I'm just gonna go finish up the beacon. But we're still short those communication components, or these antenna components. We don't have a functional beacon yet. We need to have a functional beacon if, we're, if we want to keep our base. What are we going to do? Okay, so we're going to put uh, all of our inventory back into the cargo container. Now I need to make some beacon components. Oh, but we don't have any silicon. That's what we're missing. So we need 40 beacon components. And then I need to make some silicon. Silicon wafers. So I need to go to the refinery and move up our silicon ore to the front of the list so we can produce some silicon wafers. And as you can see, that as soon as it gets enough silicon wafers, it will automatically go to the assembler. The assembler will automatically start building some beacons. It's pretty handy. It's pretty quick to, to process. It won't take too much time to get to the beacons built. Or the antenna components, excuse me. Yep, okay, we're all done with the antenna components. We just needed 40, so we got 40. Now we're going to put them into my personal inventory. So we can weld them up. And I always double check to make sure that our beacon's turned off when the broadcast radius is down minimum. So that way we're not advertising ourselves to everybody around. And there we go. And in a matter of uh, about an hour and a half, we have uh, mined enough materials and set up a starter base on the Fountain Core server. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in game.